In this video, I'm going to walk through my exact SEO keyword research process. Um, this is going to be a process you can use to help you identify which keywords your business should target. And ultimately, we're going to go through a few examples. And if you stay till the end of the video, you're going to leave with a system you could use repeatedly to identify high value keywords for your business. So the first thing I like to do is uh, get an understanding of the business I'm doing keyword research for. If it's your own business, you're, you'll already have a good understanding of this. If you're working with a client, the best thing to do is to actually go to their website um, and start researching their business. So let's do, um, uh, let's pick an, a random example here. I'm gonna do it for, uh, let's see who shows up for a keyword like employee engagement software. We see some ads here and let's go with this company here. So what we're gonna do is the first thing I'm typically gonna do is just start to get a feel for their products and their services. A lot of times these are gonna give you the initial seed keyword ideas to start researching further. If we look through this, it looks like they focus on customer experience, employee experience, strategy. You can go a little bit deeper and see specifically employee research, employee engagement. So you're already starting to get some ideas for words you can put in to a keyword tool. Now, the very first thing you can do, let's start here, is employee engagement. So. Uh, without even using a keyword tool, we can just go to Google and start to look at these autocomplete suggestions. This is going to give you some additional ideas for potential keywords to target. Now, if you hit space and then a letter, you can go through really every letter and start to see more ideas that you might not have thought of otherwise. I like to have a spreadsheet open while I'm doing this and just start documenting the ones that look interesting. You could actually search the keyword, take a look at the search results. Um, scroll to the bottom, you'll also see people also search for. There's just another free way you can get some quick ideas. Now, the other thing I like to do is um, check Google Search Console for keywords you're already ranking for. Because this is a website I don't work on, I'm gonna show my Search Console account. If you go to performance and then search results, this will show you all the keywords your website currently shows up for. So I like to export this and kind of work with the data in a Google Sheet. But this will give you some ideas on one keyword you're already ranking highly for. If you see a number less than 10, that means you're on the first page. But you could also sort it this way and start to see keywords you're not ranking very well for. And I like to look for ones that have low rankings but high impressions. So how to create an SEO report. I'm not ranking well. I'm on page 10 or 11 of Google. But this gets over 4,800 searches. So this is probably one I'm going to want to explore if this is relevant to my business. Now the big thing with keyword research, probably the most important thing, does it really show up in the data? It's using your judgment on which keywords you feel like are relevant to your business goals. Um, you have to put yourself in the shoes of your target audience and what you feel like they would be searching um, to help you prioritize which keywords to go after. If you're looking for a broad traffic strategy, how to create an SEO report might make sense uh, for me. Uh, trying to get more SEO consulting clients and grow my agency. How to create an SEO report may not be the best keyword for that. If I was selling a reporting solution, um, it could be. Um, but even for what I do, there is some value in it. But this is where you have to use your judgment on, is this the, the next keyword to focus on? Um, the metrics are great, but really the, the judgment piece is what separates kind of average keyword research to ones that are going to be really impactful for your business. So um, you can also sort by impressions and see highest search keywords. Again, I'm looking for ones that I'm not ranking well for. If I'm in this range, like 27, there's probably a page on my website that I could already improve because I'm ranking. If we look at this, I do have a blog on automated SEO reporting. Not ranking great, but it's still on page three or page four of Google, so there's something to work with there. If the number's much lower, um, like let's go to 73 here, SEO report for client, same thing. I probably don't have a page that's good enough here. And this one, I might actually make a new piece of content to actually target this. So these free options can get you pretty far. Um, I really like using uh, paid options as well. So one of the benefits of tools like this, like SE ranking here, is I can go into the research tab and it gives me a lot of options here to do a little bit more advanced keyword research. Uh, the other thing it does, it speeds up the time it takes. When you're using free options, there's a lot of manual work of checking things, moving into a spreadsheet. When you use paid tools, it's going to be much faster. So that's really the trade-off. Do you want the speed or do you, or do you rather, would you rather save the money and go the manual route? There's no real right answer for everybody. But the value of these tools is you could put it in your own website or you could put it in a competitor website. 
So in this case, let's put in um, this company here and let's click analyze. And then we're gonna start to get some reports here on how much traffic they're getting, how many keywords they rank for, paid traffic. And again, you could do this for all your competitors. This is really handy. If I click on this here, it's going to tell me who my competitors are from an SEO standpoint. Because sometimes business competitors, if they're not doing SEO, you don't learn a whole lot from their SEO strategy. So sometimes your actual true SEO competitors may not be business competitors. And that's where tools like this are really, really nice. So again, I can see common keywords, which websites have the most overlap, um, totals, a variety of metrics, how much traffic, the value of their traffic. So let's just go with the first one here. If I click into common keywords, I'm now going to get a report that has all of my competitors' keywords. Um, and we can see the breakdown that are in common with me. And you can see where we rank and where they rank for each keyword. Really valuable way to see where they're doing better than we are. Uh, you can get some additional SEO data like difficulty. The lower the difficulty score, the easier the keyword is to rank for. Search volume is how often the keyword gets searched per month. You can see a little bit of Google Ads data here on like how much it would cost if you were to run Google Ads for these keywords. Then I really like the SERP overviews. Because my SEO strategy now is not just focusing on the standard SEO listing. It's actually looking at what else is available on the search result. Is there, in this case, there's an image pack. Sometimes there'll be video on the search result. You'll see this button right here is the AI overviews that are really prevalent now. Um, some keywords may have a local map uh, pack and your Google business profile is, is important for those. So again, this gives me um, a good indication of which keywords my competitors are targeting. Now you could just put your competitor's name in here. You don't necessarily just need to look at what they overlap. Um, so an example what we can do, let's use Qualtrics again and let's take a look here. So if we go to, let's go to a different one. Let's go to, let's go to this one here. So what I can do in this case, I can go back to overview and just put in my competitor as well. And then now I'm not looking at the gaps they have in common. I'm just looking at their total strategy. How much traffic are they getting? Are they running paid? It looks like very little paid here. Uh, the countries the traffic comes from. And right here, I can get the full keyword report of all the keywords they're ranking for. This is a great way to just start sifting through this and plucking out the ones that would be relevant to you. Again, when you're looking at competitors, not everything they're doing is gonna be relevant to your business. So you do have to use judgment here and start selecting the ones that you feel like are valuable. That's why I like to move everything into a spreadsheet so I can take data from all these different tools and methods and then transfer them over to a spreadsheet. Uh, the pages report, this is another nice view on what are the pages your competitors have created that are getting them the most traffic. So it's a really quick way to understand one, like what's working the best for them. And you could sort of like this page here is getting 10% of their traffic. Um, this is one that if, if it's relevant for us, we're probably gonna wanna do. And you can see the reason for that is it's ranking for thousands of keywords. And this is really powerful being able to see one piece of content and then in one click, get all the keywords that that single piece of content is ranking for. Um, what I look at now, and this is where search volume is misleading. If you just look at search volume for the one keyword, 14,800, that's a, a, a lot of searches, but that, it's actually much higher than that. Because when you start to look at all these different keywords that this page is ranking for, and you can see the position here, um, the search volume is hundreds of thousands per month. So the same thing can be said at a smaller scale. If you see a keyword with 50 searches, sometimes we think it's not that much, but then if there's 20 other keyword variants, all of a sudden the search volume is much higher. So this is really, really nice because it actually groups keywords uh, together for you. If this website is ranking for all of these with one page, uh, we can probably do it as well. We just need to reverse engineer their strategy. So I really like this page report for understanding the types of content we may need. Now you could also just use standard keyword research tools. I always like to start with competitors because I can quickly grab some of the keywords that are uh, relevant to me. But then I like to use, and let's use the uh, employee engagement topic. I like to go one by one through each important topic for my business and use these different keyword research tools here. So we're gonna use the main keyword tool. We're gonna paste this in and click analyze. This is gonna give me more detailed information on this single keyword. Search volume. Uh, cost per click, global volume, difficulty, um, all of these different factors here. But what's really important is the keyword ideas. And there's a few different versions that I can get here. I can get similar keywords, related keywords, or question-based keywords. 
So this is going to give you tons of ideas. I can already see 4,000 keywords here, another 2,000 here. So it's important to go through these one by one and again, select the ones that you feel like are most relevant and impactful for your business. Um, I really like the SERP overview as well. This is a really good way to get really a good handle on what's happening on the search results. So if we look here, we can see the top five, there's an AI overview at the top, uh, and we can see how much traffic each of these websites are getting. Again, you can click through to any of these and also take a closer look at their actual content. Um, let's go to this one here and let's see. So now we have the actual URL pulled in and we can get all the data on this one page and how it's performing, all the additional keywords, um, and, a, and a ton of other information and then if they were running paid. So really a good way to dig into things. Um, you could also see some ad data as well if you're doing any paid search. But I really like these reports here. This is going to get you very far if we click into this. This is going to have all the keywords um, related to employee engagement. And again, you can use filtering by difficulty or search volume. You could add more filters. Uh, there's a lot of ways to do filtering. You can customize. I'm a big fan of just exporting out of the tool and putting it into a spreadsheet. And then I work with the data in the spreadsheet and do my own filtering there. Um, seeing the trends are, are nice. Uh, search intent, this is a really good feature. A lot of keyword tools have rolled out. We used to do this manually of like actually searching the keyword and trying to see like, do people just want information or are they looking for products? Are they looking to buy? So just quickly getting that search intent. If you see informational, that usually means you need more informational content like a blog post to rank. It's not a perfect metric, but it's a, good, a way to just speed up your process. Um, again, getting these SERP overviews is super cool. Because again, now for this keyword, I can see a complete overview of the search results. Um, which ones are the most authoritative? Which ones have the most backlinks? So for this keyword here, you can see the top results have a lot of backlinks. So this is a keyword we're not going to be able to just make a, one piece of content and rank. We're going to need to do some, some backlink work. So you can really go deep into uh, the data here. If you're a newer website, you might want to target lower difficulty keywords. Um, so that's something you're gonna have to evaluate for your brand. If you're just starting with SEO, I probably wouldn't start with the most difficult keywords right away. Um, if you've been at SEO for a while, then you could really expand the, the number of keywords you're going after. But, um, but yeah, that's kind of one of the main things. Uh, this is another nice feature to quickly see Inside of employee engagement, some of these uh, topic uh, with topics within that category. So if I want to see keywords about employee engagement about questions, so what you'll see here is employee engagement survey questions. Uh, let's see what work does. If I click on work, it's going to give me keywords related to that category. Uh, so at work, uh, employee engagement ideas that work. We can do activities, so we're going to get a bunch of keywords related to engagement activities that people can do. So it's another way to like quickly sift through large data sets. If you see any word here that feels like it's relevant to your target audience, it's a good way you can get more specific keyword data without having to sift through thousands of rows. So um, really like these kind of tools here. Now, if we go here, let's again do employee engagement and let's start the search. So this one, uh, actually, I'm not going to do it in my account right now. But there are more advanced tools in here that you can start to explore. Um, that autocomplete example we were giving, uh, if you don't want to do that manually, you could actually use tools like this to generate the information. Now, I want to show one more free option. So the other option for keyword research is to just use Google Ads Keyword Planner. So if you go to Tools and then Keyword Planner, you'll unlock this data here. Now, these are really the main two tools I personally use. Uh, when I'm just doing SEO keyword research is discover and then get search volume. If you already know the keywords you want, you want uh, to go after and you just want some data, this is what you're going to use. But we're going to start by trying to discover keywords first. And we're going to stick with that employee engagement example. Now you could also put in a domain, uh, which will help Google generate you more ideas. And you could change location here. So what's cool about this, if you're a local business and you're sort of targeting one area, you can actually change this so you have that location filter. So it's a, uh, a nice feature of Google Keyword Planner, but we're gonna keep it US. Now, this um, Google has a bunch of options to help you kind of broaden, but now we're gonna start to get data here and we have 600 keywords Google's giving us. I like that you get these like percentage changes of like which keywords are growing, and then you do get a lot of Google Ads data as well. Um, so let's say um, 
this keyword we like, and, and this one, you can just go down the list and grab these keywords. Uh, again, I like to export out of tools like this and work with it in other areas. So you could download. Um, but this is a, a free option to just quickly get ideas. Uh, you don't need to pay for ads. You just need a, a Google Ads account. Now, if you already know um, your keywords, I'm just going to put two in here, and you're just looking to get data, you just click Get Started like that. And now we're, we're going to quickly get the data that we want. Um, I'll show a local example because I think the, the local examples are pretty cool with a keyword planner. So if we do like storage units near me, normally it's if I just do, and let's do like self storage and we'll do storage units in. So one has a local modifier for Austin, Texas. So you'll see there's 1,200, uh, 12,000 searches for that. Now there's 246,000 for self storage. That's in the entire US. So when you're looking at a near me, same thing, 1.5 million, but that's not 1.5 million searches in Austin. So this is where this location filter is really important. Otherwise you can't really get accurate search volume for these broad keywords if you don't have a way to modify the location. So now what I can do is I can actually change this to Austin, Texas. And let's just use that one and click save. And now we'll see, now I have true search volume numbers for all these keywords here. And I can more accur accurately predict how many people are actually searching uh, and which ones are growing. If you look at storage units near me, that's had great growth over the last year. So keyword planner, really good way to also dig into your keyword data. So the biggest things with, and the biggest takeaway is there's all these different data sources. You wanna get as many keywords that are relevant to your business into a spreadsheet um, and really start looking at it less from a data standpoint on how many searches and difficulty, but more from a business standpoint and use your judgment. Which keywords on your list are most relevant to your audience? I wanna group them by like ones that have buying and purchase intent. So what are the keywords where if someone types in, they're in the market for what I sell and my solution? You have to use your judgment to identify what those are. Then you could use the data as sort of like a tiebreaker. Once you have a list of those high value keywords, then start looking at search volume and difficulty. The mistake I see a lot of people make is they just look at search volume and difficulty regardless of the intent or the value of the keyword. And that's gonna lead you down the wrong path. You wanna first use your judgment and then use data to almost be a tiebreaker. The next group of keywords is gonna be maybe more informational keywords. After you've started to target the core business keywords that are gonna drive the most business results, then as an expansion strategy, you could start to look into what are the keywords my audience is searching before they're ready to buy. And you could sort of educate them and get in front of them before they're actually searching for your solution. There's gonna be a lot more searches on that side of things. They're not gonna convert as well, but it does fit into your strategy. Now, once you've grouped all those keywords, into that list of more informational intent. Then you can go through and start digging through keyword data like search volume, difficulty, how many backlinks you might need, what the actual SERP page looks like, how many features are on there, and you can really build your strategy based on that. So that's it for the keyword research video here. Again, biggest things are get familiar with these tools, use a variety of tools and methods, and take all the data and move it into a spreadsheet and then ultimately build out your content strategy and keyword strategy based on the data you're pulling in from these various tools.